For ages, the mystique of a vanished city in Arabia has cast a captivating spell, capturing the attention of fearless adventurers and brave explorers. This mesmerizing sanctuary has beckoned a diverse array of individuals, including the renowned Lawrence of Arabia and countless others who have affectionately dubbed it the Atlantis of the Sands during their fantastical quests. Join us on this course of adventure as we try to locate the lost city of Iram. The city is known as the Atlantis of the Sands, and different notable mythologies have different beliefs about this surreal city. Lawrence believed Iram was located in an area called Aramal, known as the Empty Quarter or Rub al Khali by Bedouins. The Empty Quarter is Earth's largest continuous sand desert, spanning parts of Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, and the UAE. Although it is now inhospitable, geological evidence suggests that the desert was once fertile millions of years ago during the late Pleistocene era. The Arabian Neolithic period saw water buffaloes and hippos residing in the region, while the Holocene climatic optimum brought another period of moisture. However, Human activities like agriculture and animal farming led to desertification and the encroachment of dunes by the late Iron Age, around 1550 BC. But was the empty quarter completely uninhabited by humans in the 6th century BCE? Not entirely. Archaeological findings reveal that the Rab Akali tribe managed to maintain oases that provided water and sustenance. Numerous settlements were established around these oases, indicating prosperity and progress. Even as far back as the 7th century BCE, the Assyrian Empire recognized the wealth of Arabia due to its trade in spices and perfumes. Greek historian Herodotus described southern Arabia as a major producer and trader of valuable goods like frankincense, myrrh, and spices, mentioning a desert crossed by a river that flowed into the Red Sea. The Bible also references the Sabians, who were associated with the region and its riches, challenging the notion that the empty quarter lacked wealth. To dig out more, we need to explore the origins of the fabled Atlantis of the Sands and its possible connection to Iram. The first known mention of this city, Iram, dates back to a map from 150 CE. Claudius Ptolemy, a mathematician, astronomer, and geographer from Alexandria, Egypt, created the map and marked a location called Amanum Emporium, or the Omani Marketplace, in the Rub al Khali Desert. The name and location of the Emporium suggest a bustling center for trade and commerce. Scholars have long debated the significance of the Emporium in southern Arabia. While some believe it was a commercial outpost at the crossroads of busy trade routes, it's more likely that it served as a gateway and resting stop for frankincense traders. The Roman Empire highly coveted this valuable commodity, as it was used to produce incense for pagan shrines. The Dofar Mountains in the southern Arabian Peninsula were the primary source of frankincense, and traders would bring their caravans to the Omana Emporium to sell and purchase supplies. The city authorities provided shelter and refreshments for these traders, while encouraging side trade deals among them, on which they would levy taxes or custom tolls. These revenues would contribute to the upkeep of the town. Although it may seem mundane, it's plausible that Iram, the mythical Atlantis of the Sands, originated as a glorified service station. Interestingly, Historical records concerning the Emporium mentioned on Ptolemy's map go silent for centuries, leaving the fate of Iram and its thriving civilizations shrouded in mystery. To unravel this enigma, we turn to pre-Islamic Arabic poetry, particularly a verse by poet Ufnan al-Tagalibi from the late 6th century CE. The verse, when interpreted in the context of belonging to the Ad tribe, suggests that Iram could be either the name of a place or a people originating from a place. Another mention of Iram is found in the Quran, written between 609 and 632 CE. Chapter 89, verses 6 to 14, invites readers to contemplate how the Lord dealt with the tribe or people of Ad and their magnificent city of Iram, adorned with unparalleled pillars. While translations may vary slightly, the chapter consistently portrays the tribe of Ad, along with the Samar people and the pharaohs, as transgressors who brought about great mischief. Consequently, the Lord punished them severely, acting as a vigilant guardian. The Quran also mentions the Thamuds in chapter 7, verse 78, describing them as an arrogant nation that rejected the teachings of the monotheistic prophet Saleh and was subsequently wiped out by an earthquake. Similarly, the people of Aad, a tribe in southern Arabia, are frequently mentioned in the Quran. Their fate is depicted as a lasting curse until the day of judgment due to their rejection of the monotheistic prophet Hood, as revealed in chapter 11, verse 60. 
The Quran's portrayal of Iram can be seen as a parable illustrating the dire consequences of rejecting the one true God leading to the destruction of entire civilizations. This narrative shares similarities with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible. However, these clues can also be interpreted more literally. It is plausible that a city called Iram, serving as the capital or an important commercial center within the kingdom of Ad, once existed. Its numerous pillars would have distinguished the city, symbolizing wealth and power. At some point before the writing of the Quran, between 609 and 632 CE, Iram met a catastrophic fate. One theory suggests that a sudden calamity, such as an earthquake, brought about Iram's demise. Supporting this idea is a verse by the poet Labid, who mentioned the Atlantis of the Sands in his poetry between 622 and 661 CE. Labid's verse implies that Iram and the people of Tamud suffered a similar fate, as described in the Quran, where an earthquake struck the Thamuds. However, it remains unclear whether Labid based his writings on other sources or retold the Quranic verses. References to Iram can be found in Islamic religious texts, poetry, and literature, including the Ahadith, the sayings and traditions of the Prophet Muhammad. One of the most famous tales associated with Iram is that of Abdullah, who discovered the lost city while searching for his lost camel in the Yemeni desert. According to the tale retold by the learned scholar Kaab al-Abar, Iram was a marvel constructed of gold, silver, and gems, ruled by the long-lived King Shahad of the Ad tribe. Although this story did not mention Iram's destruction in the 11th century, it helped to cement the city's mythical status as a lost city. The tale inspired one of the most famous stories of the Arabian Nights, a collection of traditional folk tales from Arabian, Indian, and Persian origins. In addition to the tale of Abdullah, two other stories contribute to the enduring legend of the lost city of the Ad. One is the history of Garib and his brother Angie, in which the protagonist meets an elderly man who survived both catastrophes that befell the Ad and Tamud tribes due to his adherence to monotheism. The other is the science fiction narrative of Mullah and Badiat, in which the hero falls in love with the enchanting princess Badiat, who belongs to the jinn. Interestingly, some stories depict Iram as a heavenly place rather than a doomed city. According to one account, King Shahad constructed a magnificent palace resembling heaven on earth, ultimately leading to his downfall. According to this account, the former residents of Iram were transformed into jinns or listeners. In the early 1900s, British explorers began showing a renewed interest in the enigmatic city. Among them was Harry St. John Philby, who ventured into the Rub al Khali, the vast, empty quarter. In his travels, he encountered ancient ruins near the Aflaj oasis, referred to by his Bedouin guides as the Palace of Ad. Philby pondered whether this was the elusive Iram or a different site altogether, as its construction appeared to be more recent. Around the same time, another British diplomat, Bertrand Sidney Thomas, ventured into the Rub al Khali from east to west. Relying on local Bedouin guides, Thomas heard tales of a buried city named Iram in northwestern Dofar. These accounts described a once magnificent city adorned with treasures, date gardens, and a fortress made of red silver. The guides even revealed a path leading to Iram, where the borders of Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Oman converged. Thomas managed to mark the route on a map but could not continue his exploration. In 1981, Filmmaker Nicholas Clapp embarked on a mission to locate the lost city while filming a documentary on Arabian Oryx. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory initially dismissed Clapp's proposal to use space imagery to uncover buried ruins, but they eventually mapped a network of caravan trails that led to the small settlement of Ash Shisar. Here, Clapp found promising artifacts and enlisted the help of explorer Sir Randall Fiennes and Arabian archaeology specialist Professor Zarens to finance the expedition. In 1991, Professor Zarens led a team that excavated the Shisa area and uncovered the remains of a large octagonal settlement with towering walls. The protruding stone struts suggested that frankincense traders may have used the city as anchor points for tented market stalls. The team also discovered evidence of a catastrophic event, an underground limestone cavity collapse estimated to have occurred around the 2nd or 3rd century CE, which led to the city's ruin and the decline of the frankincense industry. While the discovery provided insight into ancient trade routes, some debated whether the site was the mythical Iram. Professor Zarens believes that Ayn Humran, 
a fortified trading center on the Indian Ocean coast of Oman, may be the true Safar, the final stop for pre-Islamic traders before sailing to India. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated about the mysterious world. Whether or not the city of Aram existed is still disputed. Its significance lies not in its existence, but in inspiring artists and motivating explorers. The discovery of ancient towns sheds light on southern Arabia's past and the spice trade, and the legend of Aram's influence endures. For more details on this city, click on the video links popping up.